I call the meeting to order. I ask that you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk Tamer, would you call the roll, please? Udera? Here. Hark? Here. Conquest? Here. Bastido? Here. Mulliner? Here. Brennan? Here. Verimus? Here. Deuter? Here. Dunn? Here. Hill? Here. Tolemski? Here. Jensen? Here. Toledo? Here. Cahill? Absent. 13 present, 1 absent. 13 present, one absent. We have a quorum. The governor of the state of Illinois has declared a gubernatorial disaster proclamation in response to the COVID-19 outbreak and all of the city of Elmhurst is covered by the disaster area. In light of the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak, the mayor of the city of Elmhurst has determined that an in-person meeting for the November 15, 2021 city council meeting may not be practical or prudent in light of the disaster. All of the aldermen of the city council participating in the November 15, 2021 city council meeting, wherever their physical location shall be verified and determined that they can hear one another and can hear all discussion and testimony during the meeting. Uh, we have Alderman Hanquist participating remotely. Alderman Hanquist, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Mayor. And we can hear you. Thank you. Um, we don't have any presentations, do we? All right, uh, with no presentations, on to item four, announcements. Are there any announcements uh, from the dais? Alderman Deuter. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Varimus and I are having a town hall meeting this coming Thursday at 7 o'clock here in Council Chambers. Again, that's Thursday, November 18th at 7 o'clock um, in this room. And we have um, Police Chief Mike Ruth is our special guest. And we'll also be providing some updates on other city business. Please join us if you're free. Thanks. Thank you. Any other announcements? Alderman Polumsky. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have two. Um, in addition to the First Ward Town Hall, um, the Elmhurst Public Library is hosting an event, How Elmhurst City Government Works, on November 16th, 7 to 8.30 p.m., at the library large meeting room. Um, alderman Marty Deuter is leading this discussion. And not only is she an alderman, she's a former city staff person from the city of Chicago. So uh, that's open to everybody. And a second announcement on Tuesday, November 30th, Alderman Jensen and I are hosting a third ward town hall meeting at 7 p.m. in council chambers. Um, and we had a great discussion with a handful of neighbors last week with Deputy Chief Kozrowski, and he has agreed to come and be part of our meeting and talk about um, issues related to um, everything police oversee that uh, residents may be interested in. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Other announcements? All right, there being none, we'll move on. Receipt of written communications from the public. Is there anyone who has a written communication they would like to deliver to the council? If so, please raise your hand. There being none, we'll move on to public forum. Clerk Tamer, has anyone signed up for public forum this evening? Yes, Mayor, we have one, Maria Krasnicka. All right, thank you. If you will step over to the microphone, state your name, address is optional, <coughs> optional and you can pull the microphone down, of course. Um, and uh, you have three minutes to speak to the council. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Maria Kresnica. I'm at 239 North Elm Avenue here in Elmhurst. Um, I've been a resident for more than 20 years. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to enter into public comment and experience my teenage son had in Elmhurst last week. Um, he was working in a local business uh, right here in downtown Elmhurst, and when a patron entered without a mask, my son politely asked him to wear one. Uh, the man became belligerent and spat at my child. Police were called, but of course this coward fled. So let me flash forward to yesterday. My son, who is vaccinated, tested pov positive for COVID. 
I t tested negatively, thankfully. Um, I actually shouldn't be here tonight. I was supposed to leave on a business trip this morning, but hey, as long as some idiot who spat at my kid was able to not wear a mask for five minutes while buying ice cream, I guess hooray for lack of common sense, I don't know what. Um, now I can make I can't make a direct connection to what occurred last week with my son's positive COVID diagnosis, um, but I can tell you what I can make a direct connection to, and that's the misinformation about COVID being spread by leaders in the community. From a local dry cleaner who has a sign up right now saying that the vaccine is poisonous, to people on this very dais. When an alderman shows up to protest about kids wearing masks in school, what signal does that send to the community? It's a nod and a wink for people to not obey public health rules in the middle of a global pandemic. I'm not sure what this council can do to help safeguard the community from irresponsible citizens like the man who assaulted my son, but I think we can all try to demonstrate good behavior. Um, and I would like to find this person and prosecute him to the fullest extent of the law to demonstrate that this behavior will not be tolerated in our town. And I know that there aren't tons of people, but I mean, I don't know if the patch will cover this or what, but I mean, I guess a plea for common sense and these business owners and people in our community, they're our brothers, our sisters, our family members, our sons, our daughters, and can we treat people with a little bit of kindness, a little bit of respect, and I just hope the people in this community get a grip and get it together. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is uh, there anyone else signed up? No, Mayor. All right, is there anyone else in the audience who uh, did not have an opportunity to sign up that wants to comment? All right, uh, we will close public comment. Um, and we'll move on to item seven, the consent agenda. Uh, before we take any action on it, Clerk Tamer, would you read the consent agenda, please? Yes. 7.1 minutes of executive session of the Elmhurst City Council on October 4th, 2021. 7.2 minutes of executive session of the Elmhurst City Council on November 1st, 2021. 7.3 minutes of the regular meeting of the Elmhurst City Council on November 1st, 2021. 7.4 accounts payable November 10th, 2021, total $2,185,664.38, and 38 7.5 referral crosswalk visibility and safety, Alderman Jensen, Polemsky, Deuter, and Freemus. Uh, 7.6 report letter of intent by and between Ryan Companies, US Inc., and the City of Elmhurst for the purchase of property located at 108 North Haven Road. 7.7 .7, report consultant contract renewals. 7.8 report case 21 P12 Elmhurst Park District conditional use permit for a pod 155E St. Charles Road. 7.9 report liquor license request Riza Bar and Grill. LLC and Riza Wine and Spirits LLC. 7.10 report York and Villette Business Association's Farmers Market Extended Season 2021 through 2022. 7.11 uh, report St. Charles Road and Chicago Central and Pacific Railroad Crossing. 7.12 report Utley Stormwater Pump Station Rehabilitation Project Change Order Number One Fiber Edition. 7.13 an ordinance granting a variation from the front yard setback requirement and denying a variation to the fence height limitation to the property commonly known as 454 East Webster Avenue, Elmhurst, Illinois. 7.14, an ordinance extending temporary executive powers pursuant to section 3.16 of Elmhurst Municipal Code and pursuant to no. 65 ILCS. 5 oh, forward slash 11 dash 1 dash 6. 7.15, an ordinance waiving bid and authorizing the execution of a contract between Aries Charter Transportation Inc. and the City of Elmhurst for services related to the 2021 Explore Elmhurst Express Holly Trolley Program. And 7.16, a resolution approving and authorizing Actually, the execution of the good. Local Public Agency Engineering Services Agreement and the Local Public Agency Agreement for federal participation for the Addison Avenue, Cottage Hill Avenue, and Union Pacific Railroad Crossing Project. 
Thank you, Clerk Tamer. Is there any item on the consent agenda that anyone would like to remove, either to further discuss or to vote against? Alderman Toledo. 7.8. 7.8. Clerk Tamer? Uh, we're removing 7.3. And you're pulling those back for correction? Just uh, to have it up, yeah. All right. Next. Alderman Jensen? Uh, 7.3, I don't see minutes posted under the item. I guess that's, that's why, why we're, we're taking, <laughs> that's why we're removing we're it from the consent the agenda. That's okay. No. All right. Um, <laughs> good point. Um, all right, so 7.3 and 7.8, anything else? All right, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda minus items 7.3 and 7.8. Alderman Molner, second by Alderman Hill. Clerk Tamer. Who, who was the second? I'm sorry. Hill. Oh, thank you. <coughs> Udera? Aye. Park? Aye. Conquest? Aye. Bastido? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Remus? Aye. Deuter? Aye. Dunn? Aye. Hill? Aye. Polemski? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Toledo? Aye. Okay, Hill's absent, 13 ayes, zero nays, <laughs> one absent. 13 ayes, zero nays, one absent. The consent agenda minus item 7.3 and 7.8 passes. On to item 7.8. <coughs> For Tamer, would you read the resolution? The therefore, the Development Planning and Zoning Committee recommends that the City Council approve a final plan unit development with the site development allowances for the property commonly known as 155 East St. Charles. In addition, the committee recommends that the City Council suspend the rules to allow the report and ordinance to be approved at the same meeting. The City Attorney is hereby directed to prepare the necessary documents for City Council approval. Signed, Danny Polumsky, Chair, Mark A. Mulliner, Vice Chair, and Emily Bastido, Alderwoman Ward 6. Thank you. May I have a motion to put this before the council? Alderman Plumsky, second by Alderman Moliner. Alderman Plumsky. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to defer to Alderman Toledo, who pulled this report. Alderman Toledo. Thank you. I just wanted to take an opportunity to um, thank the Elmers Park District, um, Executive Director Rogers, and Facilities Director Ferentino. Um, this park and adult center being um, wholly in the fourth ward. Um, we're very excited as fourth ward residents and I can speak for Alderman Cahill as well um, to have this project moving forward. Um, it's going to be a great addition to the neighborhood, both the playground and the facilities for, for all of the residents of Elmhurst in general with the um, redevelopment of the adult center. So I just wanted to thank um, the Elmhurst Park District and the committee and the commission for their work moving this planned unit development through. Thank you. It is right across the street from the fifth ward. I just want to. <laughs> but it's all in the fourth ward. Yes, 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 of course. <laughs> um, all right. Any other discussion on item 7.8? Being none, Clerk Tamer, call the roll, please. New Dara? Aye. Park? Aye. Conquest? Aye. Bastido? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Remus? Aye. Deuter? Aye. Dunn? Aye. Hill? Aye. Polumsky? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Toledo? Aye. Cahill absent, 13 ayes, zero nays, one absent. 13 ayes, zero nays, one absent. We'll see if 155 East St. Charles survives the remap in the fourth ward. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, we are on to uh, item eight, uh, report 8.1, Clerk Tamer. It is therefore the recommendation of the Public Works and Buildings Committee that the City Council incorporate the proposed changes into the fiscal year of 2022 budget as presented. Signed, Michael Brennan, Chair, Brian P. Cahill, Michael Honquest, Vice Chair, Alder, Alderman Ward 4, and Tina Park, Alderman, Alderwoman Ward 5. Thank you, Clerk Tamer. May I have a motion to put this before the Council? Motion, Alderman Brennan. Second, Alderman Park. Alderman Brennan. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> so the current El Elmhurst Public Works team uh, supporting water reclamation facility, lift station, stormwater projects, and water production has been understaffed for some time. <clears throat> As part of the, the 2014 IEPA uh, consent order, the city of Elmhurst was requested or required 
Yeah, to implement a computerized maintenance uh, management system, we call it Lucidy. The system inventories the assets <clears throat> for our water reclamation facility, lift stations, stormwater projects, and water production. So far, we have 70% of our assets in this system, and it's already showing we don't have enough maintenance capacity on the current team or structure you know, to complete preventative maintenance, uh, unplanned maintenance, and emergency maintenance. We also, as city staff, surveyed uh, comparable nearby utility operations <clears throat> um, and unfortunately didn't find exactly one that, that you know, was like Elmhurst because no other community has water reclamation, water production, and stormwater under one umbrella. So to, to, to really, you know, the big, big part of the operation is water, water reclamation. So we focus on Downers Grove and, and Springbrook uh, wastewater operations. Um, Downers Grove has 20 uh, people working in that facility. Springbrook uh, water waste operation has 21. <clears throat> Elmhurst's entire staff is 15 and a half. And that's, that's covering uh, uh, responsibilities well outside the water reclamation facility. There are 44 various sites that are being supported by this team. So we have a system that indicates we have a maintenance capacity problem, you know, to, uh, you know with the, the current team structure. And we have a comparison to at similar communities, wastewater operations that indicate our, our team is understaffed. So what's also interesting, along with the consent order, <clears throat> we, we've, we've completed numerous projects. Uh, currently, we have projects that have been completed. We have projects that are underway, and we have future projects. And all these projects are going to total a cost of $66 million to $86 million. So it's a very large investment for the community. So after three committee meetings and a, a tour of these facilities, each committee member uh, went on a tour. Uh, it's an impressive facility, by the way, but it was fascinating to see the new versus the old <laughs> and uh, you know, see the, the whole operation. But we unanimously concluded that it would be prudent you know, to add three and a half resources to the current team to appropriately maintain and protect the city's investments in these mission critical facilities. Uh, increasing the staff will extend the life of our assets and will we'll be a budget neutral, um, will be budget neutral to operating budget as we're proposing to reduce targeted consulting services aligned with this department. So that's the overview of the report. Uh, I thank you, Mr. Mayor, and appreciate any support or questions. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Brennan. Discussion? Alderman Dunn. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I want to thank uh, the Public Works Department for being patient with my continuing inquiries and, and the, all the uh, members, especially Chairman Brennan, uh, for, for my... Uh, um, queries uh, on you know what what the intent was here. Uh, I, I just from my perspective, this is highly unusual to add three and a half uh, people to the uh, to the roster here in in, uh, in in the city of Elmhurst. I know we've had very long drawn out discussions in the past about maybe adding a part time communications assistant or. Um, a half-time consultant for you know, marketing or, or, or uh, you know, real estate appraisals, uh, or even uh, you know one assistant city manager uh, quite a few years ago. So you know, that certainly was surprising to me, being on the council for ten plus years, to see a proposal to add that many people. Um, so. You know, I looked at it very carefully. I wanted to un understand: uh, is it a capacity issue? Is, is it a skill level that we're we're lacking? And uh, I you know, was happy that 
I was able to get a lot of good information from staff and uh, I think what I what I've seen is that the maintenance required uh, th to be done is 17,000 hours a year uh, which equates to about 10 people uh, we have seven now so we're just to get that preventative maintenance done we're about three three shy uh, and I want to thank um, our public works director for get, getting me some of this data uh, uh, recently. Also, there's uh, because we're short staff, uh, our backlog of tasks that are getting done uh, or that need to get done is, is growing. Uh, I think that was uh, maybe about 3,000 or 4,000 hours, which equates to about four months of work. So you know we're we're behind by about four months. Um, so you know, I could see the the three, the three and a half. Uh, there might there there is some justification for that. Uh, I, I know I, I looked at some future conce conceptual planning that was provided, and there was you know maybe five, six, seven, eight more people uh, shown in that, and you know that would be uh, I would have concerns over that uh, to almost double the staff. Uh, you know, out there. Um, but uh, as far as this decision goes, uh, should we add four people, subtract a part-timer to equate to three and a half people? Um, I think at this point, I, I could support that. Uh, that plant, uh, uh, our, our budget for that plan is very large every year. Uh, the, the labor um, is a noticeable part of it, but you know, most of it is capital. We want to keep that plant running properly. And uh, so I would support the report as it is right now, uh, but would you know, caution uh, or provide some guidance to, to try to be as efficient as possible out there uh, so that uh, we're you know, we can get it done with, with uh, just the staff that we're adding. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Dunn. Alderman Toludo. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll echo um, some of Alderman Dunn's comments. Um, I have a lot of experience, uh, as we all do, with the, the financials and um, the municipal utility fund and water rates and sewer rates. Um, you know, I, I can support this as well. I think that it's the right decision to make at this time. I have concerns about the growing um, staff implications that, that were shared with the committee in some earlier meetings for the out years. And I think it's just important for all of us to remember that this will impact water and sewer rates. You know, there's not an avoidable, um, something else that's in the report because we're expanding the staff, there are gonna be needs for more vehicles um, and those will be an incremental cost. So um, it, is, it, is probably, it is the right thing to do um, given all of the information that the committee shared, um, but it is, a, it is not free, um, especially in the outcoming years as those consulting costs, you know, weren't may, maybe anticipated in the budget. So I just want everyone to keep that in mind as we, as we come around in, you know, January, February and start talking about water and sewer rates again and the implications that those might have, um, maybe not this year, um, but maybe in um, years to come. So thank you. Other discussion? Uh, Clerk Tamer, call the roll, please. Udera. Aye. Park. Aye. Conquest. Aye. Bastido? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Baremus? Aye. Deuter? Aye. Dunn? Aye. Hill? Aye. Holumsky? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Toludo? Aye. Hey Hill is absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. Report 8.1 passes. <clears throat> On to 8.2. Uh, report, Clerk Tamer. It is therefore the recommendation of the Finance, Council Affairs, and Administrative Services Committee that the City Council approve the City of Elmhurst 2021 tax levy in the amount of $19,913,654, representing a zero increase in the City's tax levy compared to 2020. 
Furthermore, it is the recommendation of the FCAAS committee that the City Council approve the abatement of all current debt service obligations for the City's general obligation bonds in the amount of $9,090,850. <coughs> the FCAAS committee also recommends that the City Council direct the City Attorney to prepare the 2021 tax levy ordinance and appropriate debt service abatement ordinances. Signed, Bob Dunn, Chair, Noel Toledo, Vice Chair, Jennifer Verimas, Alderwoman, Ward 1, and Chris Johnson, Alderman, Ward 3. Thank you. Can I have a motion to put this before the Council? Motion, Alderman Dunn. Second, Alderman Toledo. Alderman Dunn. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we have a lot of fun topics in the Finance Committee, uh, and certainly this is one of them. Uh, it's an important one, the, the uh, amount that the city is going to levy for taxes uh, for 2021, which you have to pay for next year, actually. Uh, so uh, it's one of the more important decisions that the committee has to get consensus on uh, and, then, and then have the, uh, the council uh, accept that um, and support it. Um, so, you know, what, what are we proposing? Uh, a zero, um, we've had a zero dollar increase in our levy, uh, the total levy, tax, library, debt service uh, over the past five years. I, you know, I think that re really says something for how the city's being managed, uh, especially in light of what's happened in the past year or two with the pandemic. Um, we were fortunate to get a little bit of help this year from our retirement expense. Uh, that went down, uh, that actually went down a little bit uh, because of uh, market returns. Um, but um, on the other hand, uh, prices are going way up. Uh, the EAV in the city has gone up 5.2%, um, 5, 5 um, which uh, is you know, pretty, pretty significant year over year. Uh, the CPI has gone up 5.4% um, uh, in our latest tax levy, um, uh, estimated tax levy that the council passed a few weeks ago, which we're required to do. Uh, it's either 5% or the CPI. And uh, generally it's been the CPI because it's been much lower than the 5% uh, for uh, since I've been on council 10 plus years. Um, but, uh, you know, this past year it was actually higher uh, at 5.4%. So our estimated increase in the tax levy w w that was approved uh, was 5%. But that's, that was only an estimate that we were required to, to file. Um, you know, we, we expect prices, the price increases to continue at that level from what we're getting from the Illinois Municipal League in terms of commodities and, and uh, certainly, you know, es escalation of, uh, you know, e everything. Um, the, uh, <coughs> so I think it's important to, to recognize that, that we're in a, in a, in a challenging environment uh, to continue to fund city operations. Uh, the tax levy is a very large source of revenue, uh, along with the sales tax, uh, you know, being another one. And, um, you know, when sales tax go down, we have to, you know, look at sale, uh, the tax levy a little more critically. Um, we have, uh, you know, we have an issue in our, uh, uh stormwater fund, uh, that is going to hit next year. Uh, we're going to be short by $650,000, approximately. Um, when we, uh, the city has implemented, uh, a few years ago, a, a quarter percent home rule sales tax to help fund stormwater projects. And at the time we felt that that was going to be adequate to, to fund all, all our stormwater projects. Um, but we had a lot of them and, uh, the, the, the total of those has you know, gotten to a point where now that funding source is 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 not not enough uh so we're short next year on the stormwater um and um uh so you know that that's a consideration in in trying to uh, make make the city whole in in terms of all of our <coughs> um also want to mention uh 
the nine nine million dollars in debt service that, that uh, is being uh, is being abated. Um, uh, that that we continue to do that uh, as as a matter of uh, standard practice. Uh, but we didn't we didn't do that for a few years after the last recession. So we were. Continue, we're continuing to be able to do that. Um, our, um, I want to make a comment on new growth. New gro you've, you've seen a, a lot of the development in town, uh, and uh, I got some information from our finance st uh, staff uh, that downtown development um, and, and new homes. Um, over the past few years, uh, you know, help alleviate some of the burden because you know the value of those goes up, so they take more of the share uh, of the tax levy, uh, and uh, you know, thus the average homeowner has to pay less. Um, our c calculations uh, for an average home of about four hundred and seventy-five thousand uh, dollars, the ac the uh, average tax bill would actually go down by one percent. Um, and even though we're you know doing a uh, zero dollar increase in in the levy, it, it is actually uh, because of the new growth is helping uh, a, a lot of our residents. Um, so. Ask you for your support. Uh, the committee's consensus was uh, to have a flat levy, uh, which um, the city portion uh, increased by 1.3 million, uh, the library decreased by 1.3 million, and the debt service uh, is continuing to be abated. Um, so I would ask for your support. Thank you, Alderman Dunn. Additional discussion? Or Tamer? New Dara? Aye. Park? Aye. Hanquist? Aye. Bastido? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Remus? Aye. Deuter? <coughs> Aye. Dunn? Aye. Hill? Aye. Kolumsky? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Toledo? Aye. Okay, Hill's absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. Report 8.2 passes. On to item 9, 9.1, Clerk Tamer, would you read the title? An ordinance granting a conditional use permit for a preliminary and final plan <coughs> unit development with site development allowances for the redevelopment of the property commonly known as 155 East St. Charles Road, Elmhurst, Illinois. Elmhurst Park District Adult Center and Centennial Park Redevelopment. See item 7.8. All right, may I have a motion to put this before the council. Motion, Alderman Polumsky. Second, Alderman Mulliner. Alderman Polumsky. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This uh, ordinance accompanies um, item 7.8, and in that report, it is recommended that the council suspend the rules so that we can approve the ordinance on the same night. Um, Alderman Toledo, I think, um, helped um, explain and describe this um, new amenity and um, another benefit to the fourth ward and all of Elmhurst. So um, that's being requested um, as part of the zoning process by Elmhurst Park District. I would encourage anybody who's interested to go ahead on board docs and look in the library on the plan, um, Elmer's Park District planned unit development if you want to take a look at the renderings and what is planned. So I ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Polemsky, additional discussion? All right, Clerk Tamer, would you call the roll, please? Nudera? Aye. Park? Aye. Hanquest? Aye. Bastido? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Baremus? Aye. Deuter? Aye. Dunn? Aye. Hill? Aye. Kolumsky? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Toledo? Aye. The Hill is absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. Uh, the ordinance passes. Item 9.2, Clerk Tamer, would you read the title? An ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of a non-exclusive license agreement by and between the York Villette Business Association and the City of Elmhurst, DuPage, and Cook Counties, Illinois, 
and the non-exclusive license agreement. See item 7.10. Thank you. You may have a motion to put this before the council. Alderman Deuter, second Alderman Hill. Alderman Deuter. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this ordinance is related to the report that 7.10, and we are suspending the rules so that this is an extended farmer's market that can begin before Thanksgiving. And it is the continuation, this is actually similar to what took place with the farmer's market last winter, which was a COVID innovation. And this is one I think that um, was very popular with both residents, visitors to the market, and a handful of the merchants who want to repeat this. So I think this is something that will <coughs> stick around into the future, um, but this is gonna take place on Saturdays um, and will be run um, by the same group that does the um, summer farmer's market. Saturdays, November 20th through May 28th from noon until three, and it's by appointment. Um, so there's more information, I'm sure, on the York and Villette website for that. Thank you, Alderman Deuter. Additional discussion? There being none, Clerk Tamer, call the roll, please. Udera? Aye. Hark? Aye. Hanquest? Aye. Bastido? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Doremus? Aye. Deuter? Aye. Dunn? Aye. Hill? Aye. Polemski? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Toledo? Aye. Bay Hill is absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. Uh, ordinance 9.2 uh, passes. Um, on to item 10 resolutions. Uh, would you read the uh, recommendation of 10.1, please? A resolution authorizing the execution of the Second Amendment to, le to the Letter of Intent to Purchase 108 Haven Road, Elmhurst, Illinois, by and between Ryan Companies U.S. Inc. and the City of Elmhurst to extend the execution date of the proposed purchase contract. See item 7.6. May I have a motion to put uh, this resolution before the Council. Alderman Polumsky, second Alderman Mulliner. Alderman Polumsky. Thank you, Mayor. This is just to allow the continued um, discussion and for the um, Ryan companies to proceed with their zoning request. Um, we, instead of um, turning this over um, and continuing to do these, we are requesting that we have another, let me see, six months on here. Okay, March through March, first 2022 to be able to continue um, this ongoing process. Thank you, Alderman Thanks. Polunsky. Additional discussion? There being none, Clerk Tamer, call the roll, please. Udera? Aye. Hark? Aye. Hanquest? Aye. Bastido? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Remus? Aye. Deuter? Aye. Dunn? Aye. Hill? Aye. Polunsky? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Toledo? Aye. And Cahill is absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 Aye. absent. Uh, the resolution in 10.1 passes. 10.2, uh, read the resolution, please, Clerk Tamer. A resolution approving and authorizing the execution of change, order number one, for the Utley Storm Station Rehabilitation Project, Project 19-35, see item 7.12. All right, a motion to bring this before the council. Alderman Brennan, second. Okay, Alderman Park. Alderman Brennan. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this resolution is related to the Utley Storm, uh, Storm Station change order uh, above under consent agenda item 7.12. Uh, we're asking to suspend the rules uh, to approve this resolution so we can continue the work at the Utley Storm Station. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? Clerk Tamer, call the roll, please. Udera? <laughs> Aye. Park? Aye. Hanquest? Aye. Bastido? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Baremus? Aye. Deuter? Aye. Dunn? Aye. Hill? Aye. Polumsky? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Toledo? Aye. And Cahill's absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. Uh, re resolution 10.2 passes. Item 11 reports and recommendations of appointed elected officials. 11 1, Mayor 11. 
Um, a few things just to uh, mostly good things happening around town as I'm sure everyone heard the boys can you say boys, young men, whatever they're called, soccer team, girls, young women, cross country, both took state championship on the same day. So, all right, you know, we're going to have them here on December 6th to invite them to appear before the council so that we can extend congratulations on behalf of the city council and the community. Um, a lot of activity on Veterans Day. Um, I attended the Elmhurst University's uh, music event, which is uh, I think they've been doing for a number of years, very fine Wilder Park event, which was indoors. Um, American Legion of, uh, and our uh, uh, Veterans Commission put on a fine um, ceremony. Alderman Hill joined me at the Grove with some of the students from the Elmhurst <coughs> University Veterans Association, Veterans Committee, or whatever, uh, and we met with about 13 veterans, gave them some certificates on behalf of the city. Uh, it was a very, uh, um, it was a good thing to do. These are guys that can't, guys and gals that can't get out. And so we were able to go in and bring the ceremony to them. We spent a couple hours, uh, the university gave them blankets. We gave them certificates. We had a recruiter give them shirts and hats. And it was, uh, it was a very good feeling day over there. Um, I attended Ward 2 with Alderman uh, Dunn and Alderman Hill. Uh, it was a good ward meeting there. Uh, today, I was at the Transition Center dedication for those who've been around the community for a while. The Transition Center has been about 12, 15 years in the coming. Uh, the director over there said, if any of the aldermen want to come over and take a tour, it's really a well-designed uh, facility that will be a credit to that program. Um, last, um, the woman who came before the council, who I didn't know was coming before, that spoke earlier about the uh, treatment of people wearing masks. I know that I have learned I don't speak uniformly for the mask requirement that has been imposed by the governor, but I hope I speak uniformly for the fact that we have workers in our businesses. Many of them are high school students who are being, uh, and, and it's, like I say, uh, I had two other comments before this woman who came before the council to speak where there is a resistance, a belligerence, a rudeness for store owners who are merely requesting people to comply with the law in their own business. Um, a lot of the merchants are having a hard time finding employees. You may know we have our cool to be kind a promotion to say, you know, take care of these people who are um, working uh, and, uh, you know, I hope that people will um, maintain more than a modicum of um, decency and if you're asked to wear a mask in someone's store, comply. It's not only the law, it's the right of the store owner to require that. Um, I don't know, Alderman Bramus, I thought you had something you may want to add, but... Um, I don't have anything to add to right, your comments good. on that, except similar, that I have heard from several business owners throughout this past year and a half, customers coming in and being belligerent um, regarding wearing a mask. And as a business owner myself, I've experienced it, and I just ask that we support and respect um, the policies that our business owners have implemented for their particular business model and safety for their employees, regardless of how you feel about wearing a mask or not. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, that is all that I have, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. I have a few items. Next uh, Monday, before the committee meetings, we will hold the annual Joint Review Board meetings. Those are uh, meetings that we're required to have each year to explain the uh, TIF reports uh, for the, um, actually we need to do it for five of the TIFs. We have three in place, but two that um, still have money in them. So that will start at six o'clock and they will run consecutively after that until we're done uh, right here in council chambers. Uh, as uh, the city council approved tonight, the Holly Trolley will begin November 27th and run each Saturday until December 18th. Um, a reminder that on Thanksgiving, we will have a number of road closures downtown for the Turkey Trot. Uh, so come and participate in that. Uh, one of the largest runs in the area that day. 
And then last item is our next free leaf collection is the week of December 1st. So that'll run December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd with your regular garbage day, unlimited uh, leaves at the curb in containers, either bags or garbage cans. All that information is on our website if people would like to know more. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else have a report or recommendation? All right, that concludes item 11, item 12, other business. Is there any other business to be brought before the council? There being none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Alderman Park, second by Alderman Deuter. Uh, we're gonna call the roll, Kirk <coughs> Tamer. Deut uh, Nudera? Aye. Hark? Aye. Hanquest? Aye. Bastido? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Barimus? Aye. Deuter? Aye. Dunn? Aye. Hill? Aye. Polumsky? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Toludo? Aye. And Cahill's absent. So 13 ayes, zero nays, one absent. 13 ayes, zero nays, one absent. We are adjourned. We will reconvene in five minutes. Committee of the whole. Thank you.